Hi, everybody. I'm Hub Arkish, along with senior editor Arthur Arkish, associate editor Nate Atkins. We're reporting for Pro Football Weekly. And the story around the NFL this first week in June appears to be about the quarterbacks. Arthur, the Indianapolis Colts and Andrew Luck are reported to be inching closer and closer to the biggest contract in the history of the league. There's never been any doubt that Luck would be in line to get it. It looks like it could happen between now and training camp. Yeah, Jim Irsay has been saying actually for a while now, 4th of July was kind of the deadline they had in mind, and there's no reason to think it's not going to happen. I think it's smart of the Colts that to Despite Andrew Luck's down year before all the injuries, they've seen enough. They know he's the franchise. And for an organization that has struggled with distractions in recent years, I think it makes a lot of sense to try and get, like you said, this massive contract done, not let him have to worry about going into a contract year that way. You know, and it's worth pointing out, Nate, he was struggling before the injury last year. But again, change it offensive coordinator, quarterback coach. He's going to be in a better spot to do exactly what Chuck Pagano wants him to do this year. Yeah, and he's going to need that bounce back because everyone will probably be in agreement that he he's the quarterback uh, among the young guys in the league that you want to build around the most. That's why he's about to get the largest contract in history. Didn't do it last year, and it might have been related to some rib injuries he was playing through. But uh, the stability should be much, much better there up on the offensive line. They spent, you know, three or four of their draft picks trying to fix that area. They finally understand they have to protect this guy to let him do what he can do. Arthur San Francisco, a quarterback controversy. You guys both Mizzou graduates, so maybe you're Blaine Gabbert guys. Colin Kaepernick, clearly the higher upside, bigger ceiling of the two. Always the belief that he's a guy that chipped Kelly would love, and yet we're hearing reports that number one, Gabbard is so far ahead of him right now because Kaepernick's still unable to work out after the three offseason surgeries. Also, Kaepernick's issues have been as much off the field as on the field. Not a bad guy, just a different guy. Gabbard apparently beloved in that 49er locker room. Well, then Gabbard's come a long way because just a few years ago, and, and obviously he has. People were wondering maybe about his love of the game, if he was the kind of guy that is going to be a natural leader. So encouraging certainly for the 49ers and Blaine Gabbard if that has changed. But as you alluded to, the higher upside, uh, the bigger question too is with Colin Kaepernick he is the guy who would seem to be uh, you know picture perfect for that Chip Kelly offense so he's got to get on the field because like you said some of this is out of his control with all the health issues he's dealing with. One more story Arthur we look at the situation in Philadelphia where just a couple weeks ago people were saying Carson Wentz is the best looking thrower of the football quarterback in camp now the word is that Sam Bradford is starting to put a stranglehold on that job because of his comfort and what Doug Peterson wants him to do. Yeah it's obviously good news for the Eagles he has to be that starter this year at whatever it is 22 million guaranteed but most importantly it's the comfort it's the grasping of that Doug Peterson offense it was the same reason why before the Carson Wentz stuff started you actually heard some people saying it was going to be the other former Mizzou quarterback Chase Dan who might have the early lead but if Bradford is starting to wrap his head around the offense no reason to think he's not going to be the guy for them uh, who he's going to kind of get the ball to I think is another question altogether and finally unlike Wentz's situation Jared Goff just nobody in front of him to take the position from him probably not quite as ready to play as Wentz but it looks like he most likely will like Wentz he has a lot of has to develop and I think for him it's a lot physically he's got to get a little bigger he's got to get stronger it's something he's acknowledged and he said he's added weight over the offseason but it's a lot different to do at the NFL level to take those hits and there there might be some hits behind that offensive line so I think they understand there's going to be growing pains they went in with that with the big trade up to number one but they're enamored with his with his potential and if they can find something in the receiving game to give him a chance to develop there I think they'll take their lumps when they come Veteran minicamp's going on now. We're less than seven weeks away from the opening of training camp, less than 100 days from the first game of the 2016 season. For all the best coverage, news, scoops, and rumors, stay right where you're at 24-7 at ProFootballWeekly.com. Oh.